These are difficult times. <laughs> our adversaries are strong, stronger than we thought. Some of our defenders are struggling. But I'm confident because, of course, I'm talking about the Golden State Warriors against OKC. <laughs> OK, how about that game last night? Do we have any Warriors fans in the house? All right, I know who I'm having lunch with right there. OK. Um, let me begin with a little bit about the security series. We started this in 2013. This is our seventh event, and it's our second time here in Palo Alto. And each time we try to create an agenda that's timely and relevant for the local community. For instance, when we went to New York, the focus was the progress that had been made or assessing the progress that had been made in building resiliency in the financial system after that spate of DDoS attacks. In Houston, the focus was critical infrastructure and energy in particular. Now, a little bit about the Chertoff Group for those of you who may not know us. Um, we're an advisory firm and focus solely on security. And we do this through three practice areas. First, a risk management or a security services practice to help clients understand their own risk. And then next, uh, business strategy and investment banking to help clients develop and execute growth plans and programs. We're headquartered in DC. We have offices in London, New York, Houston, and here in Menlo Park. And this is where we lead our technology sector. Okay, so about today. Today, the focus is on enabling growth by leveraging digital transformation. And I think this is a really critical question. And the fundamental question is this, is how do we as leaders create growth securely, and at the same time, protect public safety and individual privacy. And this is a question for everybody, all of us. And I think it's easier to sort of grasp, uh, come to the right conclusions, if you start with a thorough understanding of what we call the three T's of the digital economy, and that's technology, threat, and trust. Now, why is that? These are three big interrelated ideas that together have a profound impact on strategy, on policy, and on public opinion. Now for starters, I think you need to consider how they're gonna impact your organization, but actually I think there's more than that. I think you actually need to make a decision. You need to decide how you're gonna leverage the first T, and that's technology. You need to understand how to react to the second one, and that's threat, and then influence or shape the third, and that's trust. Now, when we began our work around the three T's, it really started with a belief, a deep belief, that we are living in a magical time. It's the golden age of innovation. And if you look at the profound impact of the tectonic shifts that include open source, social media, big data, cloud, mobile, and of course, IoT, every organization can, and I'd argue sh must, reassess how they interact with customers and suppliers, deliver goods and services, and in some select cases assess, do we even have a valid business model anymore? I mean, consider, would you rather be Blockbuster or Netflix? That guy who's the proud owner of New York City taxi medallions or an early investor in Uber? I think the point is the people who make the right bets on technology are gonna be the winners. They're gonna lower costs, they're gonna deliver beds, better goods and services to their customers. And there was a really cool report that came out a while ago, and it's called the Digital Vortex, and it's by the DBT Center. And what they, what they focused on, they said four out of 10 industry incumbents are gonna be displaced due to digital disruption over five years. I mean, if that's true, that is stunning. And I think if you're a leader or a CEO, it says, you've got to look at this golden age and you've got to figure out, are we going to be a leader, a laggard, or worse, roadkill? Now, unfortunately, this golden age, as you all know, because you're here, has a dark side. It's enabled a new class of bad guys, and they're taking advantage of holes in these new platforms to create new risk. And this risk takes the form of cyber threat. And that's the second T, threat. Now, sadly, one of the effects of all these breaches is an erosion of trust, and that's the third T. 
trust that citizens have in government, consumers have in business, and government in some doesn't seem to trust anybody, least of all themselves. But uh, this is really a sad situation because we all know how important trust is to any relationship. And there's a number of studies that show the linkage between trust, security, and privacy. And I want to highlight just a couple of them. In 2015, the Pew Research Institute did a study that found that 74% of respondents said it's quote unquote, extremely important to be in control of the online information about them. Edelman Communications, which is one of the world's largest marketing and comms firms, does an annual study called Trust Barometer. And what they try to look at is the relative change in factors that go into how we evaluate brands that we all trust. And over the last two years, a huge increase in the value that we all place in privacy and security of online data. And the numbers didn't vary, regardless of country or vertical market. And then finally, a local firm, High Trust, uh, no pun intended, um, did a study to look at the effect of a breach on buying behavior. And what they found was is that 52% of consumers said in the event of a breach, we're taking our business elsewhere if we have the choice. So what does all this mean back to this bigger question about balancing growth with security and privacy? Well, first, I think there's some really good news. Um, many leaders, many CEOs are now seeing that cybersecurity is a lot more than a technical risk. It's a business risk. And that for many, it's their top business risk. Now, just two days ago at a Reuters conference, the chairwoman of the SEC came out publicly and said, cybersecurity is the top business risk facing the global banking system. Really incredible. Now, unfortunately, not as many people recognize the direct linkage between a digital growth strategy and cybersecurity. But that's, there's signs that that's beginning to change. In April, just a month ago, Cisco released a report called Cybersecurity as a Growth Enabler. And they interviewed over 1,000 leaders in finance and line of business. And there were two numbers that jumped out to me, and I have them here on the page. The first is, is that 44% of respondents saw security as a source of competitive differentiation. And maybe more importantly, 33%, a third, saw cybersecurity primarily as a source of growth. And I personally think that is spot on the money, is, is that I think the companies need to realize, or organizations need to realize, is you can't have an effective digital or growth strategy without a tightly interwoven cybersecurity strategy. Now, those are some of the themes that are gonna sort of pervade some of the talks and how we approached organizing the agenda today. So let me take a look, let's kind of walk through the highlights of the agenda. Um, we're very fortunate to have General Hayden here, who is gonna lead a keynote discussion with Katie Montgomery from the Chertoff Group. Um, for those of you who don't know the general, he is the only person to have led both the CIA and the NSA, and he was our country's first DNI, Director of National Intelligence. And then this year, he added a, another element to his accomplishments, and that's best-selling author, and it's a dynamite book. Um, that's my, my first plug, General, for the book today. <laughs> uh, he didn't ask me to do that. Um, the balance of the day is going to be organized around four panels and something we call spotlights. And we introduced the spotlights to kind of create a little bit of a staccato feel to the agenda and create some fresh thinking around things like technology, policy, and leadership. Now, the first uh, spotlight in the morning session is going to be from a local NIST engineer who's going to talk about a privacy initiative coming out of NIST. The two panels this morning are going to focus first on encryption and then on identity. And if you, we kind of wanted to start there because if you think about digital transformation, it's got to start with the computing model that we live in, and that is driven by mobile and cloud. And if you buy that thesis or you agree with that thesis, then some of the core building blocks in security have to be identity and data security. And I think this is going to be a couple of very lively conversations to get the morning going. Um, at lunch, uh, we have a networking theme around that, birds of a feather. 
and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's proven to be popular in the past. And then when we come back, the first spotlight session is um, there and back again. And uh, for those of you who might recognize that, that is the subtitle to The Hobbit. And uh, like that book, this is gonna be a tale of an amazing journey. Um, then our first panel in the afternoon is gonna be about leaning in to your cybersecurity investments. And I think this is gonna be cool. We have a mix of investors, CISOs, and vendors who are gonna talk about this art and science of how you find, develop, and actually implement winners. That's always hard, but it's gonna be harder, we think, in the next couple of years as the investment climate gets a little bit more restrictive and depending on your view of the economy, maybe the budgeting gets a little bit more difficult over the next couple of years as well. Then our last spotlight is a real treat. We have Dave Thomas, who's the special agent in charge for Northern California for the Secret Service. Dave's gonna talk about his firsthand experience of living in Russia and working with Russian law enforcement. Really cool talk. And then our final panel is one that I'm personally passionate about, and it's security in the boardroom. And we have an unbelievable group of panelists who are gonna to try to get into why and how boards are focused on cybersecurity and where do we need to take it, okay? So that's the agenda. Now, just a little bit of uh, thanks. So when I say it's not possible without these sponsors, it's not possible without these sponsors. So I would be grateful if you have a chance just to meet any of them and say thank you. And that's Accenture, Strategy, Arbor Networks, Cisco Systems, Microsoft, Coalfire, and SailPoint. And then we have three event sponsors as well. Uh, the first is Passcode, which is a new venture from Christian Science Monitor. So they're actually live streaming this event over the web. And we're re really excited about that. There's a number of people who wanted to be here but couldn't participate. And then we have a couple other event, uh, sponsors in that as well. Tenfold Communications, and then Bay Area Council and Cal CISO. Okay. Now, just sort of a wrap up, just some uh, logistics and things to make the day go a little bit easier. Um, first, we will have questions in, after every panel session. I know you guys aren't shy, so we really encourage those. And it makes it a little bit easier if you can wait for the mic and just identify the organization that you're with. Um, for those of you who are interested in continuing the conversation, we've got a hashtag on anything that's not nailed down. So you should be able to find the hashtag, and we encourage you to share that over the web. And then finally, um, if you can, if you can put your phasers on stun, um, it'll make it easier when we're in the middle of the panels, okay? Um, so with that, it's, uh, I'm really, really thankful for you being here. I hope it's a great session, valuable for you, and I look forward to meeting you. And without further ado, let me introduce our opening keynote, uh, General Mike Hayden and Katie Montgomery. Thank you.